So our first order of business is going to be to figure out whether we can take what we learned about numerical invariance for rational tangles. In particular, we learned that the fraction of a rational tangle gives us a complete invariant for that rational tangle. The first thing we want to do is figure out how to use that to tell us something about the knots, which are related to those rational tangles, called rational knots. What we're going to get out of this process is something called Conway's notation that can be used to tabulate rational knots and if you dial it up a little bit more, you can also use it to, to tabulate other knots that are not rational. Um, this is all inspired by Colin Adams' exposition in Chapter 2 of the Knot Book. So first of all, if we want to go from rational tangles to knots, the first observation is that that might actually restrict the kinds of knots that we're going to be able to work with. In particular, it's going to limit us to work with a class of knots that are called the rational knots. And by definition, uh, we're going to call a knot a rational knot if there exists a rational tangle whose numerator closure is equal to that knot. So what does that mean? So if I have a knot k, this is the knot which is sometimes called 5-1. It's the, the five-pointed star knot. If I have a knot k which is a rational knot, then that means that there exists a rational tangle. And in the case of this knot, it happens to be this tangle right here, such that when I take that tangle and I form its numerator closure. And by definition, the numerator closure of a tangle means that we're going to take and close up the strands on top, close up the strands on bottom, to turn this tangle into a knot. And this tangle is related to this knot just by Reitermeister moves. In other words, in order for a knot to be rational, I have to be able to take two of its loops, two of its arcs, if you like, and maybe pull one of them to the bottom of the knot, pull the other one to the top of the knot, in such a way that we isolate all the crossings of that knot in the middle in a fashion that gives us a rational tangle. Right. So these are going to be the rational knots. And you might ask yourself, well, how do we know that all knots aren't rational? Uh, and the first job there would be to figure out if you can find an example of a knot for which if you did this process in any way you like, pull one loop to the bottom, one loop to the top, that you're not going to get a tangle that's a rational tangle in the middle, one that can be built up using the operations that we learned about uh, in the past couple of weeks. So these will be the rational knots. And the good news about the rational knots is that they're a pretty big class of knots, um, because we know there are infinitely many rational tangles that we can build that are distinct from one another. Um, each one of those will give us a, a different knot when we close it up with the numerator closure. Um, but there are a few knots which are not actually rational knots uh, that we might be interested in later in the semester. But here's the good news. The good news is that the manner in which we associate a tangle with a knot doesn't actually matter for rational knots. In other words, um, if you give me a rational knot, say you give me this knot 5-1, or maybe you give me this knot down here at the bottom, um, for a given rational knot, the way in which I associate a rational tangle with this knot um, does not depend on how I pull the loops in this knot to the top and the bottom. So for example, for this knot, if I choose to maybe pull these two marked loops to the top and the bottom, or another way to look at that is if I choose to cut this knot at the two purple x's right here, and then take those four cut ends and make them the vertices of my rational tangle, if I choose to cut this knot in those arcs, then this is the tangle that I end up getting once I isolate all those crossings in the middle. So if I call that tangle T1, and if I make a different choice, Let's say I choose the two arcs on the bottom to be the arcs that I cut uh, and then pin those down at the vertices of a, of a square to give me a rational tangle. On its face, it looks like these two tangles might not be the same. Uh, but at least in this particular example, if we take a look at the, the crossings, and we're going to have the same number of crossings for these two tangles for sure because we haven't created or destroyed any crossings in the process of cutting apart this knot and making a tangle. We're going to have not only the same number of crossings, but we can actually see that these yellow highlighted crossings in the tangle on the right and the orange crossings in the tangle on the right over here actually correspond directly to these yellow and these orange, respectively, tangles uh, in T1. Okay. So there's a proof there uh, that we're not going to have the time to really go all the way through. Um, but we can show um, that for a rational knot, it does not matter how we turn it into a tangle. We're going to get a tangle that might look different, but all of its crossings and the ways in which they're arranged give us the same rational tangle uh, both ways. So another way to say that is if I take the numerator closure of two tangles, two rational tangles, and I get to the same knot, then that must mean that the two tangles, the two rational tangles, must have been the same uh, in the first place. So this process by which we associate a tangle to a rational knot is a well-defined process. It's a nice one-to-one -one correspondence. And what's great about that
is it means that if I can come up with an invariant for this rational tangle, then that will give me an invariant for its associated rational knot, right? because the two of those go hand in glove. And that's the observation that leads us to what's called the Conway's notation for a rational knot. And the way that Conway's notation works is it just takes the rational tangle associated with that knot, determines the coefficients in its continued fraction representation, and then uses those coefficients to be a tabulation, a notation uh, for this knot. So for the knot down here at the bottom, um, we can use what we know about how to tabulate rational tangles using their continued fraction notation to observe that this one is really just the continued fraction 3 comma 2. And so Conway's notation just removes the, the extraneous brackets and parentheses and just writes the integers next to one another. So 3, 2 would be the Conway notation for this knot because it's the continued fraction representation of its associated rational tangle. If we look at the one up here on top, this rational tangle here, we can observe, has the notation 5. It's just a single 5 twist. Uh, and so this rational knot, the 5 pointed star knot, uh, has the Conway notation just plain 5. So Conway's notation is nice because it directly connects us to something that we already have figured out how to do, that is to associate a continued fraction with a rational tangle. And so it's nice because it's constructive. If you give me the Conway's notation for a rational knot, I now have a recipe for how to actually sketch that knot. So if you hand me 4, 2 as a Conway notation, then I know that that means 4, 2 as a continued fraction. And I know how to build that rational tangle, because we figured that out uh, over the last couple of weeks. And then all I have to do is form the numerator closure of that rational tangle, and I get the rational knot, which is described by the Conway notation 4, 2. There it is. If I wanted to, I could write a master around these crossings a little bit if I wanted to to get a prettier picture. But this at least captures this is a valid diagram uh, for the topological essence of the knot whose Conway notation is 4, 2. So that's the good news about Conway, is it's really richly constructive. There's an easy way, now that we know how rational tangles work, to reconstruct a knot out of its Conway notation. The bad news is that not all knots are rational knots. Uh, and so not every single knot that we could meet out there in the wild has a friendly Conway notation rational tangle associated with it, at least not a single one. Um, so for example, the knot which is often called 8 subscript 10. So it's sort of the 10th the 8-crossing knot which was discovered in the early parts of the 20th century. It's a way to think about what that notation means. Um, is not a rational knot. Um, the good news about it, though, I suppose, is that it can be built out of several rational tangles. So there's not a single rational tangle whose numerator closure gives you the knot 8, 10. Um, but there are three rational tangles, which if we stitch them together, does give us 8, 10. So we can dollop Conway notation to make it a little bit more capable of handling knots that are not rational, but which are almost rational, which have rational pieces. So in this example, using commas in the Conway notation, 3, comma, 2, 1, comma, 2, what that tells us to do is to take the three rational tangles, 3, 2, 1, and 2, build each of those uh, on its own. Um, and then the commas in Conway notation tell us to add those rational tangles together in the way that we define addition of rational tangles, which is just to join up their open strands horizontally. So if I add those tangles together horizontally and then form the numerator closure, then I'm going to get a knot whose Conway notation is 3, comma, 2, 1, comma, 2. And this knot is the knot 8 subscript 10. So it's not a rational knot because there's not a single rational tangle whose numerator closure gives us this knot. But it's at least nice enough that there are these three rational tangles, which if I stitch them together, add them together in the rational tangle sense, that the numerator closure of that thing does give me 8 sub 10. So Conway notation is super powerful. And you'll see a lot of sort of atlases, field guides to prime knots uh, that include the Conway notation because it is so convenient and constructive. And we now have a recipe for how to go from Conway notation back to knots. Um, but that recipe does get pretty complicated when the knots themselves are not rational, but they have pieces which are rational, uh, that there's extra sort of features of Conway notation that can also tell us how to stitch together several different uh, rational tangles to make a knot which when we close uh, make a tangle which when we close it up gives us even an irrational knot.